I'll be speaking with Fahid Ahmed, who is the executive director of DASIS Rising Up and Moving, which is a group of uh, South Asian activists here in the United States. And we'll be talking about a very sad case, an outrageous case in some ways, uh, of um, a man named Ahmed Fahani. So what is the story? What is the latest about Mr. Fahani, Farhani? Um... Uh, Ahmed is currently in a coma, and um, what we are uh, trying to uplift is the fact of how he came to be in the coma. Uh, Ahmed was a uh, uh, young man, young Muslim man of Algerian descent, grew up here in Queens, New York, and in 20, about 2010, 2011, began to be targeted by a NYPD undercover officer who befriended him, gained his trust, and then started to incite and inflame him. Um, and uh, he was able to successfully do so because Ahmed had a history of self-harm, a history of self-abuse, uh, had struggled with mental health issues, um, including a diagnosis of being bipolar, um, and so was somebody that was easily manipulable. And this undercover, uh, to inciting him, um, was uh, able to get Ahmed to say incriminating things, um, which were then recorded uh, and uh, framed as a terror plot. And, and if uh, I recall, these, I mean, they sounded pretty terrifying, like he was going to get guns and uh, blow up a synagogue and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's exactly the case. Uh, you know, there's also in the recordings um, or uh, through uh, other uh, evidence, you know, indications that Ahmed was just uh, looking to make some quick money, uh, was looking to flip the guns that were being talked about. And it was really the undercover officer who kept goading him into uh, being more than just a, uh, a weapons flip, but to actually be a um, terrorism plot. And... Um, in fact, it's the undercover who is pushing him to, oh, don't forget about the grenades, you have to buy the grenades. And so, you know, things that were just constantly escalating the situation um, more than Ahmed intended. Did, did, did Ahmed they connect, this, I'm sorry, did they connect him up with other people, other real terrorists? Or, is it, or was it just yeah, police? I mean, uh, you know, it was other police who, in this case, are the, are the inciters of the terrorism. Um, and so Ahmed was arrested, he was put on trial. You know, in trial, uh, a lot of this information started to come out, uh, including the fact that the undercover had previously uh, tried and successfully to target uh, a Palestinian solidarity organization and uh, had himself been under investigation by the FBI. Uh, imagine that, a NYPD undercover officer being under investigation by the FBI. Hmm. Um, and it's only when he found this uh, uh, vulnerable target in Ahmed that they were able to succeed in creating this case, which even the federal prosecutors were not willing to touch, which even the FBI was not willing to touch. So they had to take this case to the to the state court. Um, and eventually Ahmed uh, ended up pleading guilty. Uh, you know, in, in the current environment, it's hard to mount a defense um, when you have the uh, label of terrorism ascribed to you. Mm -hmm. um, and he was serving a 10-year sentence. I, I just want to clarify, clarify that one thing again, though. W were there other connections other than the informants? W w um, no. No, it, none whatsoever. Wow. So he, he, he plea bargains for 10 years. And uh, mm -hmm. where did they send him? Uh, so he was first at Great Meadows Correctional Facility, upstate New York, um, and then uh, once or twice went back and forth to Attica. And since he's been in prison, he's faced a constant amount of abuse, uh, physical abuse. He also reported sexual abuse, uh, constant amounts of harassment uh, on a personal level, uh, racial harassment, religious harassment interference with his religious practices and beliefs. Um, and uh, to the extent that, you know, he wrote uh, complaints to the Department of Corrections and to the Department of Justice. And when he got no responses and, in fact, got further targeted for writing those complaints, 
in some of his final complaints, he actually openly declared that if you do not respond to my complaints, I will be forced to take things into my own hands and I will commit suicide. Mm. And mm. then last week, uh, after reaching a breaking point, uh, it appears that he attempted suicide by uh, attempting to hang himself, oh, um, which caused significant damage uh, to his brain and to his body. And a, he is currently in a medically induced coma in um, uh, Erie County Medical Center. So you, it's pretty, pretty awful. And I remember, you know, they claimed he was a Muslim extremist. And if I'm right, his family ran from Algeria because they were running from Muslim extremists. Yes, very much so. So there was a press conference yesterday. And uh, what points were being made uh, by his uh, lawyers and f friends, I would assume? Family. Yeah, um so, you know, uh, his family couldn't be there because the family's by his bedside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, uh, not only the, the devastation of, you know, having a loved one locked up, but then uh, what often doesn't get talked about is the devastation that, that falls upon these families. Um, you know, the, the mental trauma caused by these cases uh, leaves them largely, uh, limits their ability to just function normally. The father uh, is a cab driver. He's had multiple accidents since the case happened, and it's really just because his mental capacity is no longer the same. Just constantly distracted, constantly worried. The same for the mother, uh, you know, who's uh, steadily lost a series of jobs because she she can't focus. Um, and then uh, to hear, you know, they would hear the constant uh, complaints from Ahmed and then just feel powerless to be able to do anything. Uh, you know, in our prison systems, the, it's sad to say that a lot of these things are pretty common. Uh, there's obviously an elevated level of targeting of these uh, Muslim prisoners, but, um, you know, the abuse of prisoners and the lack of responsiveness from the Department of Corrections, from the Department of Justice, is quite common. Um, mm. And so then for them to hear that he attempted suicide and, and is now in a coma, uh, has also been devastating. Yeah, now, um, you say that he had written and, and threatened suicide. Did they put him on suicide watch? They did not put him on suicide watch. They did not take any interventions. Um, if anything, and, and in fact, in, in the very last complaint he wrote, he said, I know by the time you receive this complaint, uh, I will have been further targeted for writing this letter. Um, and... Uh, so, you know, it, it, there was an established pattern of he would get harassed or abused, he would write complaints, and then he would get harassed and abused for writing the complaint. Um, and the only solution that uh, he saw was to attempt, uh, was suicide to bring attention, to hope to bring attention to his case. If I may uh, add something, so, so, you know, I think the, the press conference that we held yesterday, uh, you know, it was to stand in solidarity with him and his family, um, but it was also to uplift that the Department of Corrections and the uh, Department of Justice are responsible, both for what happens underneath their watch inside the prisons, but also for the lack of responsiveness when they got clear, very clear letters uh, and complaints from Ahmed and that they did not respond to those complaints. And then secondly, uh, you know, we also um, were there to hold the NYPD responsible. Ahmed would not be in this position if it were not for the NYPD's uh, actions in the first place. You know, the fact that somebody that already had a history of self-harm, of abuse, of mental health illness was targeted for such a case, uh, you know, clearly shows that, you know, this was an easy target for the NYPD. The, and currently the, the NYPD... PD under the uh, Mayor de Blasio's administration and the Bratton administration, you know, they claim that they've reformed the NYPD surveillance practices. But what we wanted to ask was then, where do you stand on these cases? If you affirm these cases, then you cannot claim the mantle of reform. And if you distance yourself from these cases, then you have to engage in full disclosure and come clean on these cases, make available all the records and all the files that were hidden from the public that we didn't get a chance to bring out a trial that clearly showed that this person was uh, targeted by the NYPD itself unjustly. Mm -hmm. 
Have they responded in any way since the uh, attempted suicide? The authorities? Not yet. Not yet? No, none of them yet. Okay. All right, thank you very much for talking. Thank you so much, Stanley. This has been Stanley Heller for The Struggle.